Well, hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm talking about how do you balance your art business alongside a full-time or part-time job. Now, this is something I get asked about a lot. Lots of people are still working full-time, would like to start the art business, or perhaps they're studying full-time. And shout out to the lady who actually asked me to create a video like this. You know, I know that you're all out there and it can seem like a really massive task. So today I'm going to share with you seven, 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 seven things that you can do or seven steps you can take in order to best manage your art business while you're still doing something else. Well, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Sophie and I help artists just like you to make a living from their art by creating a stable, profitable business doing what they love. If you'd like more tips and tricks on how to build your profitable art business, then you're in the right place. On this channel, we share all things art business related. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss out, then hit that subscribe button. And also don't forget to ding the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Okay, let's talk about how to balance building your art business whilst in your job or in full-time studies. Now, the first thing I wanna say, number one is we want to be realistic about what's actually possible. I've worked with so many people who say, I'm so excited, I want to leave my job at the end of the year, I want to build the business, and then I say, okay, so what do you want to achieve in, in the first year? And it's like, there was no job at all. I want to achieve 100,000 turnover. And I say, okay, that's great, that's lovely, that's your first year in business. Now, traditionally, when we start out any business, you know, actually getting to break even in the first year would be a great achievement. A lot of businesses, because you front end with an investment of, of materials and maybe a working space, traditionally a lot of businesses will actually make a loss in the first year, will break even in the second and go into profit in the third. That's very general, but if you think like that, then I think that's gonna give you, that's gonna keep you in good stead for what you're doing. So this first thing is we need to be realistic. You've now got a full-time occupation, perhaps during the day, and this is going to leave you little bits of time. And what we want to do is make sure that you maximize that time, but be realistic about it too. If you looked at the percentage of your whole week and you said, okay, what is the percentage of time, awake time, that I've actually got? Is it 20% of my working week I've got? Is it 15% of my working week? So what's the reality of what I could actually achieve? And I think as soon as we can get an angle of reality, we feel a little bit better about it. Instead of setting this huge goal that's a bit unrealistic, if we've only got 10, 15 or 20% of our working week to achieve it in. And I want to say, of course, that this is just the beginning. So for those of you who are thinking, oh no, but I want to go straight into profit. I've got all these ideas, I've got all these things. You know, this is very general and anything is possible. But I think if you start from a place of reality, that is gonna be the best place to start. And if you overachieve that, then great, that's fantastic. Okay, so the second thing you want to do is you do definitely want to set a working goal for yourself. Now, once you've worked out and you said, okay, reality, reality now, what percentage of my week have I actually got to do the business, bearing in mind if I have a job or, I have studies, I also have you know, traveling to and fro, I might have a partner or children that I have to look after, meals that need to be cooked. You know, Perhaps you have a gym membership, so you go to the gym, you take exercise, you've got a dog that needs walking, you get the idea. We've got to be realistic about that time. So if you say, okay, I've got 15% of my, of my working week to do this, then what's a good goal? Is that first goal to actually create a really solid collection and body of work? So you say, okay, over the next year, I'm going to spend 80% of my available time creating a body of work and 20% to start building um, an audience and foundations of marketing so that I have, of course, people to actually offer this work to. Okay, step number two is you want to have a working goal because having a goal keeps you very focused and on track. And we know now that we have a limited number of hours in the week, so make sure we get a little bit realistic of what that goal might be. Now, the goal might be to have booked in your very first exhibition. For example, if you're a 2D painter, for example, or 2D, you've got 2D artwork, you say, okay, it's January now, for example, 
I'm going to have a show in November and I've got until November to create all the things I need to have that very first show. So your goal might be to have a successful show and selling, I don't know, five, your first five paintings at a show in November in this particular gallery, all right? The goal, don't forget, has gotta be smart. So by saying I'm having a show doesn't mean to say you're selling anything, but if you want to sell something, then you need to say how many, or you might say by making this amount of money at this particular show. So let's keep the goal really, really specific and measurable and tangible, okay? So that's step number two. Step number three, you do want to create a good weekly timetable, especially if you've got the job that's going to take you from, I don't know, nine till five, then you've got getting home time. What are you going to do in the evenings? If you've got life things, you've got personal stuff to do, you've got exercise, you've got cooking, you've got kids to get to bed, and then you're going to perhaps work in the evening. So create a timetable for yourself. Or do you, for example, work only four days a week and you've got one whole day that you can actually work on the business? Write it out, make a timetable. When will you actually do the things? Or perhaps you work Monday to Friday and it's just you and you say, well, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on my business over the weekends. Make a timetable, write it out, make the little slots and don't forget to allow slots for exercise and downtime and seeing friends and family, etc., etc., because you need to be putting a holistic approach together, otherwise you'll end up just burning out. Trust me, I know, because I've been there. So number four, step number four, you really wanna get super organized. The way that you're gonna get maximum out of your time is by being very organized with it. So therefore, the space that you're gonna work in needs to be organized. You need to make sure that you have everything where you need it. If you have a dedicated space, that's great. Get it sorted, get it organized. Can you switch off from one thing? Walk in there, everything's ready. You don't have to rummage around and look for things. What about on the computer, your files, folders, files, is everything organized? So if you want to um, do a little bit of marketing, you're not rummaging around looking for files and folders and where was that thing you created over there? If you are that person, you want to watch, look out for later in the month, I'm having some organizational videos that I'm making, so look out for those, they're gonna help you a little bit. If you want to get super streamlined, you do not want to waste that precious time that you have looking for things, misfiling, it's just, it's, we all know it's a huge time suck. Step number five, this is the one that some people really hate, but you've gotta become super disciplined with the time that you have. That means when you're slotted into that, I'm building my art business time, somebody rings you and says, hey, do you wanna go down you know, to a bar for a drink? You don't just go, oh yeah, okay, I can do this later, off I go. You have precious slots of time that you have allocated and said that you want to use in order to get started with that business, in order to achieve that goal of having that show in November, in our example. Okay, so make sure you do allocate that time for other things, and then when you're in the zone, be disciplined turn the phone off, turn the pings and notifications off, let people know, you know what, I'm working, I'm, I'm being creative in this, I don't want to be disturbed. Be, you know, protect it with your life. It's this bubble, it's your future, it's the thing that's going to get you out of the job or get you out of student status, the thing that you really want, so you need to honour it. Step number six, something we talk about so much on this channel, and I'll link to a video on up here, this is about creating your business plan. Even though you're just starting very part-time, again, you want to be clear on what you are doing and what you're heading towards. You want to start by creating a simple artist business plan so that you are gonna stay on track and you're not going to be sidetracked off over here by distractions. For example, you get an email from somebody saying, oh, hey, do you want to put a few pieces in this show over here? Well, you have a goal and limited time and you want to put, you want to put everything into the solo show in November and you start getting distracted over here, it's gonna take time that you didn't allocate for, energy that you weren't prepared, and you might sell stock that you need for November. By having a simple business plan that will just keep you on track with where you want to go. And then lastly, step number seven, of course you want to split the time you do have between creation and business. Now that's gonna be up to you as to how long it takes you to create, um, and how savvy and fast and good you are with business. So for example, you might wanna say 80% of my time is creation and 20% is business, I'm fast, I'm on it, I've got systems, I'm all good. Or I'm a little bit slower and the business is really important to me, so 40% on the business and 60% on the creation. 
that's what I would recommend because I think whilst it's wonderful to build the product or service, you need to have the business set up in order to have people to launch to, marketing that's being done, etc., etc. And I'll link below this video to some useful free resources that will get you started and other videos that might help you again with everything you need going forwards. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and as I say, make sure that you've hit the like button so that other artists like you can get shown this video and that will help them too. All right, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.